It'll be very expensive for us to interview you from now on. Sorry. Do you want to stand up with Tomorrow, five days in captivity. Uh, they were violent, but I didn't think they were going to kill us, at least not right away. How Richard Engel survived being kidnapped in Syria. Also in our Sunday edition, big problems, big solutions. Dr. Carl with the inventions that made a real difference in 2012. And Paul Marshall meets Pinky the Pig. He drinks beer. The Pig, not Paul. From 7am tomorrow on 7. Well, both really. Now, welcome back. We know now to the incredibly sad story of a couple who passed away without anyone noticing. The bodies of Anthony and Claudine Marland were discovered up to three weeks after they died, and they were found inside their home on Sydney's northern beaches. Now, police believe the deaths are not suspicious, although the cause has not yet been established. The pair had lived at the address for more than 20 years, but were unknown to their neighbours. So how does this happen? Joining us to discuss it is the founder of Neighbour Day, Andrew Heslop, as well as psychiatrist Dr Az Hakim. Good morning to you both. Morning. Now, Andrew, Good the morning. couple was there for up to three weeks after, uh, after death without anyone noticing. Does this um, surprise you at all? It saddens me, Andrew, because what it shows us is that people are taking extreme lengths to protect their privacy. And when something goes wrong, as it has in this situation, it's been three weeks until somebody's found out. Mm. I mean, th th there is an obvious benefit there to, to knowing your neighbours if things go wrong. Are there benefits? Well, I think the benefits of knowing your neighbours include building a sense of community and having somebody to turn to during an emergency or a disaster. But one of the great things about this time of year especially is that communities do get together with the neighbours to celebrate what it is that makes their street great and why it is that they live where they do. But um, when you get a situation like this, which has obviously devastated this Sydney community, it really makes all of us think, how well do I know my neighbours? As, I mean... Just from a, um, a, a, a utility point of view, you think the first thing you do when you move in is get to know your neighbours. I mean, they may come in handy for stuff, as well as being you know, genuinely friendly. What, what is stopping people from getting to know their neighbours these days? Well, the things that determine how neighbourly we are are the physical spaces we live in, the society we live in, and how we communicate. So we look at the physical spaces. It's, it's quite obvious that if you live quite far away from your neighbour, it's quite difficult to be neighbourly. Conversely, if you're overcrowded uh, with not much physical space, what we tend to do is we mentally delete our neighbours in order to give ourselves a greater sense of physical space. Mm. The society's also changed, so it may be that if it's more unusual to pop round to your neighbour, you're less likely to do it, so it's a vicious circle. Also, if you're a sort of a single adult, you might, be, you might be wary these days of spending time with your neighbour's kids because you don't want to look like a weird predator. Mm. But most importantly, the, the way that we communicate has changed. So rather than our physical, local uh, networks of friends, now we're shifting more into the online social networks where we don't have to rely on sort of, you know, geographical location. We can communicate with everyone. So I think that's had a huge impact. Mm. What if your neighbour doesn't want to know you? <laughs> Well, that well, have you had some experience with this, Moni? Uh... Everywhere we move, I don't know why people don't want to be friends <laughs> uh... with us. No, I'm just wondering if you've got a, if you've got a quiet neighbour that just, as this couple were, uh, you know, the, from the look of their house, it, 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 um, it doesn't look like the type of place that you could probably get into very, very easily. So you don't want to harass people. Sure, and it's, you, you never know when it's a good time to pop round, whereas with, with social networking, you can pick up or reply messages you know, at your convenience. So, so the convenience and the ease of that makes us shift away from the, oh, is it a good time to pop round or go through all the fences and the, whatever it is yeah. that's, that's dividing. So it's, it's a good point. But there's definitely a correlation between the rise of social networking and the decline of being neighbourly. And studies into sort of social attitudes, comparing now to 30 years ago, shows that 
these days we're more likely to associate our neighbours with being nuisances or pests. Yeah, right. Mm. Than, than, yeah. than being nice, helpful people that we pop in on. So we've changed from geographic communities to communities of interest, in a way, haven't we? Sure, and, and researchers have come up with a, a good neighbour index, and it's a score which you obtain by the number of helpful neighbours that you have divided by the number of nuisance neighbours that you have. So the bigger the score, the more neighbourly we are. That score's halved over the last 30 years. Wow. Really? Wow. Hey, just quickly, Andrew, because um, I think most people would agree that there, there are obvious, obvious benefits to getting to know your neighbours, and, and one of them just makes you feel good, you know? Well, What's the best way to introduce yourself to your neighbours? Well, particularly at this time of the year, if you know there's an elderly or a vulnerable person in your street who lives alone, why not go and offer them the opportunity to come and spend Christmas at your Christmas table and share mm -hmm. a meal? Uh, and if they're a bit reluctant to do so, why don't you take them over some food so that they feel connected with the rest of the people in the street? But this is something that Neighbour Day has been advocating since 2003, is to break down the barriers of loneliness and isolation and rebuild those communities and that great sense of community that we had 40 years ago. Social media has changed that. Social media has actually given us the opportunity to use other channels to get in contact with our neighbour, but it doesn't replace the benefits of knocking on the door and saying, G'day, I'm mm. Andrew. Here's my details. If you ever need some help, if there's a problem or, or an issue, for don't be mm. absolutely don't be afraid yeah. to ask. And, <laughs> and, and just just final just finally on the uh, uh, as a result of the Black Saturday bushfires and, and the tropical cyclone Yazi, people always come together as a result of an emergency or a disaster mm -hmm. or something bad happening, mm -hmm. which is what the residents in this Sydney community are doing tomorrow because they've reacted to what has occurred and they're coming together. But, you know, on the last Sunday in March every year, mm. use Neighbour Day to get to know your neighbours. Come to the website, download the free resources, the invitations, the name tags, the brochures, everything you need to celebrate your community. Thank you, good Andrew. Idea. There you go. Disaster Thanks, brings Andrew. people together. If you feel you haven't got a good neighbourhood, maybe go blow up a car or you know, dig up serious. the <laughs> water pipe or something. You know, Be neighbourly and do it before March. Uh, thank you, As. Thanks, Thanks for having Az. me. Happy Very Christmas. Well, and you? Well, I'm not going to see As again. He's, He's back going back to the, the UK. UK. Hey. London's calling. Oh, yeah. how about it? Yeah, you and Martin Frizzell can join us every week after week now. We'll Thank have you, a cool Christmas. Thank you. And Thanks so terrific. much. Terrific. Latest news and weather follows the break. Also coming up, the movie dubbed The Hangover for the over 60s. Four legends of Hollywood team up. We'll join them on set for a very funny exclusive. And it's final rehearsal time at the Domain. We'll check in with Nat ahead of tonight's carols. She's going to see